if I was seen that would be, you understand it was cold and paper. Yeah. But I think we used our fingers to put it in the jar. And I'm going back a hell of a lot of years now. Somebody can go back a few years. You're the way. Must be 50 odd years. Do you mind the day in Morrison Street where you and Richard were mucking about and had the uh, pressure cooker on making broth, right? And I think it was Richard lifted the, the thing of explosion, the bloody peas and everything. <laughs> you know what I mean by that? Lifting the thing off. Eh? Lifting the thing off, you wouldn't have been able to reach it, it would burn I was under the impression it was somebody had turned the gas up. Well, maybe it was a gas, I think it was. A big difference. Well, it, it, it blew the seal. Mind. It blew the seal. It blew the seal anyway and everything went up. Sealing. Well, Dad. Mum and Dad, it was, it was Dad, he says to me, when you get yourself a pressure cooker, make sure you get one of the older ones, because they're a lot better than the new ones that you buy these days for the Canon. And I was like, right, I'll do that. And uh, first time I see a pressure cooker at a sale, I, I bids up for it, I get it, I think it costs me 17 bucks, but in the shops it costs like 95 so I got the pressure cooker and Dad was like looking at it and he was just shaking his head and I was like, what? I said, you told me to get an old one. He's like, yeah, but that's really old. And I was like, but you said the older the better. It wasn't one of the silver ones. It was the ones before that that mm -hmm. were kind of yellowishy. Really, really old one. Mm -hmm. It's like over 50 year old. So I need to try that out. I got it at the auction before I came over here. So I've still to yet try it out. Mm -hmm. See if it works. It doesn't work, we'll sell it in my auction. Mm. I've got one there. I've used it once. I bought you your mother's catalogue. Did she have a catalogue? Yeah, yeah. yeah, she had catalogues. Uh, I remember it cost me £65. Well, no. I just took this fear of using it. Not fear, but Morrison Street was still there. Uh, I just couldn't. Have. Well, that's another reason I want gas. Mm -hmm. You know, because at least I can control the temperature, whereas you can on a, mm -hmm. a thing. Wait, apparently you can get new pressure cookers these days that are designed for oh, the right. the electric going mm -hmm. high and low and high mm -hmm. and low. I'd still rather just have gas, like so. Mm -hmm. I'll get gas. And it's not just that when I redo the kitchen because I've got all the units, the where the plug is for the cooker. It's going to have to be moved along further. So if I get gas, I'll not have to move the plug along. Sorted. Mm-hmm. Makes you think. Your brain. <laughs> I'll never get over that. What now? Ten foot wall. Eh? A ten foot wall. <coughs> what about a ten foot wall? I'll never get over it. Oh, you'll never get over it? All right. That's no positive thing, eh? It's not. But in a serious note, there's no much in it. He's getting beyond redemption. There's not much in it. No much for and for. For kind of babies. All right. <laughs> I thought I'd better say something else like that. So you need to come to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's got mail. <laughs>
It's poor winds, son, is that it? Something what? like that, the wheat and the beans. Oh, there we go. Oh, right. What's that? What's a debris? <laughs> I never got over it. <laughs> well, that was the walk. And then, that was the 10-foot walk. That was the 10-foot walk. Aye, and then the one next to that. What was the next one? What, 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 what was the two of us? What was the next to the walk? The one after the war, I should say, the wee bit that you put in about the tin beans. Oh, the tin beans? Eh? What put them? Oh, never mind. Well, the sausages, isn't it? Never mind. The sausages. Curry beans? Make you fart. <laughs> <laughs> One night up at Rannoch, and I was stretching up to the top shelf for the unit, couple of units, you see. And I'm she, trying to reach up to the top, because James had given, the oldest son had given me a pair of jeans and different things for to put into the wash. And I'm stretching up. And as I was stretching up, I farted. But round the table there was James, there was James, <laughs> there was a, uh, the one I always thought was a poofter, I can't remember. Anyway, there was about seven or eight of them sitting round the kitchen table, and me, we were all sitting having a wee drink in, you see. I thought, and, oh, I was embarrassed. <laughs> My face! They probably found it hilarious. They were laughing at me. So <laughs> Especially me, your reaction. <laughs> James Keith, for one, his father was um, a judge in Edinburgh, of course. And the one that looked like it, well, he acted like a poof. Yeah. His name was Shorten. Try to think of his name. But anyway, it was him and his parents were oh, loads and loads and loads of money, you can. The other one's a bit like <coughs> another one and we used to joke about showing the turnips and different things like that, you see. Because he was a farmer. He uh, doing the board or something. Who thinks that's the name of a farmer? <laughs> Sean the Turner. Sean the Neeps. Sean the Neeps. Okay. It's, it's the name. Even like my ten pound tip with James. And James's mind scrambles. Okay. So I had to keep on at him to get this bloody ten pound off him. Okay. <laughs> but uh, uh, there was some. It's about nine or ten years around that table. It's a great big, what they used to call the deal tables uh -huh. for kitchens that you scrubbed and kept pure white, okay? But, uh, that's a laugh, sir, too. And as I say, in the windowsill, I told you the other night there in the windowsill. Yeah, but the whiskey. There was glasses of whiskey and ginger ale, glasses of whiskey and ginger But I listen. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I was going through the front hall. It's a boy, it's a boy, it's a Ken. To let them ken in the dining room. I was to let them ken, but I didn't know where to go in. It's a boy, it's a boy, it's a boy, a bouncing boy. <laughs> That's when we Richard was born. Someone for someone for a hair, eh? Eh? Every thirty seconds. No, there's there's a hair that was doing over my it, and it gets in the road. But you go on for blast back ah. two years. It gets on the road in my eye. Aye. Uh, I can see it now. I can see it. Do 
That's the one. That's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's it's in the road. It's just about to go daft at fucking the telly. What's that leader? Ah, uh, yeah, uh, Chris, look, about 50 year old and they're gone. Like that. I think we've got a hair that's going to die. <laughs> we're sure it's just 80. I'd be generous at 80 by the way. <laughs> we'll let you off for a couple of years. Dressed like bloody teenagers half of them. And their hair still like teenagers. Then uh. of course the following year Sarah was being born but I said nothing then. It's not I a girl, it's not a girl. I would just say I was waiting for a phone call. <laughs> I can still mean to this day. Hey. Which are coming in. Yeah, I was pregnant. How'd you manage that? <laughs> that, was, that was a congratulations. <laughs> How'd you manage that? <laughs> How'd you manage that? Oh. The one the thing I was against. Well. <laughs> The one thing I, I will admit I didn't like, and that was a man being at the bedside while she was giving birth. That was the one thing I did not like about it. Really? I says, it's the only thing that a woman, once she's married, can do on her very own.